The 16th century. While Spain and England were prospering, France was suffering. A war, for example, with the Catholics and the Huguenots occurred. But in 1594, the Edict of Nantes was passed. When Henry IV converted to Catholicism, Let's mix a little Italian in our Renaissance, France thought. The Renaissance then became French neoclassicalism to bring alive the Greek and Roman ideals. Hmm, France had to have some influence. The Medicis, they're the ones who married French royalty. Cardinal Mazarin, who helped Louis XIV rule France. The Commedia dell'arte traveled to France. And last but not least, Giacomo Torelli was sent to France to update theater designs. In 1402, the Confrere de la Passion was built. Before the theater arose, religious plays and dramas were not allowed. Giannis, a well-known family, published multiple plays. Le Kid, written by Pierre Cornell, was a famous play in the neoclassical ages for one reason. We'll get to this later. Moliere was a famous playwright and actor. He was involved in the troupe and wrote the most plays, and even he was influenced by the Commedia. And Jean Racine, a neoclassical tragic playwright. He wrote Phaedra in 1677, the best of the French neoclassical tragedies. Notice these two playwrights had one thing in common. Tragic stories. Cornell's Le Kid brought controversy because it did not have good neoclassical ideas. Alexandre Hardy was another example. Although a professional playwright, his work lacked neoclassical themes too. So you're wondering, what are the characteristics of French neoclassical theater? Cardinal Richelieu created the guidelines. Here they are. Decorum, where characters had to act according to their social status. Verisimilitude, meaning that action must relate to everyday life. Unity of time, obviously, that is, the, is where all the action takes place in a normal 24-hour day. Unity of place, one location only. Unity of action, only one plot with a few characters. Genre, a morality play, for example, tragedy or comedy. Never blend any two together. No wonder why the kid was rejected. It lacked decorum. Now, let's explain the architectural part. So, the first let's say, public well-known theater was the Hotel de Bourgogne. It had a unique setup. The pit, your modern-day theatron. The galleries and boxes, the side seats for the wealthy people. They didn't get a good view. <laughs> and lastly, paradise, the third and the top section of the pit. Isn't it a lovely view? They had amphitheater seating too, kind of similar to the Theatron, but not arched. The Hotel de Bourgogne was the only theater you could perform at, but people thought of ideas on how to build temporary theaters. Tennis courts were broken down, yes, tennis courts were broken down, to add more space for a theater. In 1634, an altered tennis court came from being just an average sized tennis court to being a famous theater. Its name? Theater de Marais. If one famous theater was built, another must follow. Pelias Cardinal by Cardinal Richelieu, the first proscenium arch theater in France. Later, in 1680, the Comédie Francaise, a famous theater, was also called the French National Theater. Now, let me tell you how much space these theaters have. 
Average capacity, 1,500 people. Average number of spectators, 50. Average people to see a show, about 400. The designs were pretty interesting. They really haven't modernized. Scenic design was medieval. Remember Giacomo Torelli? He helped invent something to better the design. He used a pole and a chariot system for scene changes. This was called wing and shutter scenery. Last but not least, the interesting facts. 8 to 12 performers before 1650. Woman could act. Playwright or main lead led rehearsals. Had a repertoire of up to 70 plays. Performed three times a week. The entertainment included elaborate costumes with a weak plot and dramatic stories. If someone was doubtful about a play, they sent it to the French Academy to approve it. Will it obey neoclassical rules? Soon, the government became involved with some companies, such as the opera, troops, Comédie de l'Arte, and so much more. Well, that's it for neoclassical theater.